Welcome to Schofield Farm. My name's Carice. I want to give you a November garden tour and I want to actually include different gardens on my property, not just the veggie garden. So we're going to get started. We live in Northern California, Zone 9B. We grow food year round. We have three and a half acres right outside the second sunniest city in the country. Although the last week has been a downpour of rain. I heard in like two days, we got nine inches of rain. So it's been crazy. We finally have a little bit of blue sky behind me. And that's why we're out here today. And I'm gonna show you how things look on our little homestead, family farm, gardening, all that stuff. And let's just get started. I have some little blueberry bushes out front here and some hollyhocks. And I love the color change on those blueberry bushes. They're so fall and festive. They're so pretty small. I don't think having them in the more alkaline clay-like soil is great for them. We try to amend them with like acid loving stuff and food for blueberries, but they've stayed pretty small, but they're still pretty, they're still pretty. Here's another blueberry that does not get a lot of sunlight, but it is gorgeous. I thought about moving my blueberries a bit. We have <laughs> my wet and dying hydrangeas. That's okay, they come back every year. Over here, I have my little citrus grove, and I guess I'm also growing soccer balls somehow. They are doing fine. A lot of them did not get fruit this year because we had an issue with the water in the summer, but this one has a little bit of fruit, and that is super fun. I have six that are alive in this area. That one is the smallest, and I think it's because it's under this massive eucalyptus tree. I mean, when I say massive, oh my gosh. I've heard that plants don't usually do wonderful right next to eucalyptus. It puts off some chemical that can like discourage growth. I do notice that the two right underneath it, it could be the shade or it could be that. They are the smallest. They also are pretty young. I've only had them for like two years. This one is my older one. It's like a little bush. I think that one would have produced so much fruit if we hadn't had the water issue. Back here, I've got some hollyhocks. I've got some different things. I think that is a bergamot right there. I have some blueberries that aren't wonderful, a guara and a lavender. These are sweet William right here, I believe at least rosemary and we've been cutting heavily on that because I'm making a wonderful salt with it. We have a butterfly bush that everything's pretty soggy from the downpour of rain. Oh, over here. These snapdragons are some of my favorites. They're finally flowering again. They are a really pretty color. They look like little flames coming up. And I, have, I think these are some Shasta daisies. I should cut it back and let it kind of regrow. And this purple carpet alyssum, this is one of my favorite things to put in my veggie garden, my pollinator garden, all sorts of stuff. I kind of need to start over in this garden bed because we had a water issue and chicken issue. And anyway, I'm planning on planting a lot more in this area in the spring to fill it out. I have a lot of different fruit trees that are young on this property. It is fun to grow fruit. They are young, so it's a lot of waiting. So any type of fruitfulness we get from them, I feel like I totally celebrate. I'm gonna show you some fruit trees back along the fence near my bees. There is an old pear that was here when we got the house. We got this property like five and a half years ago and it was pretty much dead. We have revived it. It had a couple pears, but basically the birds got those. And then we have a couple not beautiful looking apple trees and peach trees. So this one is the pear tree. We have nursed it mostly back to health. And this is a young apple tree that, as I said, it does not look super healthy. There's that whole dead part, but then there's this part that's alive. So we will see. I've had terrible, terrible success with apple trees. They have not done well. We also have these holes over here. We have had a huge ground squirrel problem this year. I just don't even know what to do. If you have ground squirrel, issues and have found solutions please let me know in the comments any advice you have this is a peach tree we nursed back to health that was already here no no this is the one we planted so see all those suckers from the bottom i actually need to cut those back when it's not rainy and there's not like a chance of you know things going wrong with that 
This is the one that we nursed back to health and is almost like a peach bush, but it did produce peaches and we did eat them and they were pretty good. We also have this little, I think it's a nectarine tree. Yeah, that one is flavor top nectarine. And we have this apple tree. It's really ugly, but it's doing the best for us of all the apple trees. I want to say it's a Granny Smith. I'm not positive. It was full of apples and those ground squirrels, they basically have a home in this wood pile. They or the deer or a combination stole every single one. So that wasn't exciting. We have one more peach tree down here. All the leaves are gone already. I do need to, as I said, I need to trim these up. I need to spray like copper spray and all that stuff. The bark does not look good on the bottom. That is alarming. That could be the death of the tree. And so we'll have to see how that goes. But I think we got that one from a neighbor and we just replanted it here. They just didn't have the capacity to deal with fruit trees right now. We've had so many water issues anyway. They didn't want to spend their water on trees that weren't producing fruit yet. Not actually garden related, but you will see there's only one beehive now. I am so sad. A couple weeks ago, my other hive, we discovered the bees had absconded, which means they just left. And so we are overwintering one hive. The top is actually not a super of honey. The top is, we made like an attic with pine bedding shavings. We don't have the coldest winters. You know, we're 9B. That means we might get down to like, I think the very lowest you can get is like 25. But usually if we get frost or something, it doesn't go below 30 even as a low, like in the night but we are very wet. And so having like an attic kind of thing of pine bedding shavings to absorb the water helps wetness not drip on my bees. And that can be a death of them in places that are wet winters like us. Oh my gosh, you gotta see these chickens. This is one of their favorite places to be. They're just all chilling underneath the eucalyptus. <laughs> They're actually on both sides of the fence. They're not supposed to be on the side of the fence, but they're super pretty and just, they're happy just like me to have a little bit of sunlight after all of the downpour of rain. I will have to have my boys get them out later because I don't like them in the fenced part because they rip up things like my pollinator garden, my herb garden. Oh, I miss showing the herb garden. We'll get to it in a little bit, but we're gonna do the veggie garden next. So as I look around, I'm assessing, we definitely did get some frost. I wasn't sure if we officially did or not. I had some pretty cold temps in the garden, but several things that were frost tender still looked okay. But let me show you how I know for sure that frost hit at some point. So these are tomato vines, plants in this bed and also some zinnia. And you see how they just look like, almost like a melted. There were a couple little tomatoes left on there. They don't look that great. That's how I know. We officially did get our first frost. I thought we did, but a lot of things still looked okay. This bed, we're gonna take those tomatoes out, but we have tons and tons and tons of celery. We have been using it in soups and stuff, but I need to do a big harvest because I don't need this bed to be this crowded with it. We've got some chard on the end. It looks a little sad, but we've been eating a lot off of that as well. That might be the last year for that chard. We have had that chard in that bed, I wanna say like four years. So that might be the last year. That's a lot of food from one planet. Okay, I'm looking in here. We planted garlic in here before the downpour of rain and nothing is peeking out yet. You do see some onions. <laughs> oh my goodness, see, they're like right there. I separated some of those out. They were onions from last year that I didn't get harvested. They came back up. They'll probably want to bolt and seed, but I will probably harvest them as spring onions. Here's some smushed down chives from the rain. And we've got a huge bush of sage. We used to have two huge bushes. I'm so glad we took the other one out because they take over the garden. All right, these were pretty. These were trying to make some beans for me. I planted them so late. You can see some baby beans trying, but then the frost hit it. So we got a lot of garden cleanup to do. And the sun today was unexpected. It was supposed to be still solidly raining. There's still rain forecast today even. So I might like get inside and have it downpour. So I'm probably not going to get a lot of cleanup done today. And I, it makes me honestly really want to get out here, clean up, do a second November garden tour for you. So you can see it like a little more tidy. You're going to see it like 
dead from frost, but I promised you guys to be real with you guys here, to show you the good, bad, the ugly, to take you along with us as we grow food for our family. We've got a large family. We have seven kids, five boys, two girls. So we eat a lot of food. We don't usually have a ton of extra that we grow because we eat so much of it. So we are growing food year round. We're always like rotating what's in the beds. We live in a climate where we're able to grow a lot of things through the winter, thankfully. And so I've got stuff actually in my room on my seed starting shelf. Sorry, it's really bright that angle. And I brought it in so that it wouldn't get too flooded. Literally the cups of lettuce I hadn't planted out yet, mustards and soy and stuff, they were flooded with water, like all this water on top. So I kind of dumped that off, brought them inside, not to protect them from cold, but to protect them from wet. That is this winter. This is going to be a wet winter, I can tell. I mean, it's not even winter and we have like three times as much rain as we normally get in a November. That is incredible. You can see these eggplant have had happier days. It's funny, some of them actually look like they could live. They got kissed by frost, but not completely killed. We have a couple little, oh my goodness, right here. A couple little beets that were mostly eaten by birds, but some are hanging on, so maybe we will get food from that. I planted a bunch of garlic here since we had the issue with birds eating my beets, and I'll probably just direct sow some beet seeds or start them inside to plant out in the spring and just kind of call the bird issue a loss. We have a lot more chives here that we could harvest. I feel like we could always harvest more chives. I have dehydrated so many chives. Oh, this is so funny. At the bottom of this plant, there are a few tomatoes that are still actually alive that I could bring in to ripen on the counter, even though the rest of the plant looks dead and done. I can have these and these will be food still. Oh, one more. There we go. Over here is my strawberry bed and it does produce food year round. They're called ever bearing strawberries. I don't remember the variety because I got it from a friend when she thinned her garden bed. Here is a green one, just waiting to ripen. Look, as I said, year round, Unless it gets crazy cold and freezes actual berries, it doesn't kill the plants. I need to thin these still a ton, but I love how they kind of look Christmassy with the yellow and the red tips contrasting with the green. It's actually one of my favorite things in the garden during this time of year is to see the color change in the strawberries. Oh my gosh, the amount of garden cleanup I have to do is overwhelming. So many zinnias that are dying and kind of soggy in the path. We have things planted under there. I believe we have beets and then, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's a little crazy. I'm gonna need to get some help out here to clean up. Like really, I have had a lot of physical issues this year. I don't think I can do all the cutting back by myself. That's okay. I love that my family is willing to help me and do things together. We do a lot of this growing food, raising food, taking care of chickens, all that stuff, bees together. We are definitely a teamwork makes a dream work kind of family. <laughs> You've got to see this dead Thai basil in this bed. I had already gathered so much Thai basil. I just let this part go to seed and let the bees enjoy the blossoms because I do raise bees and I love when there's something for them to get nectar and pollen from. And it is definitely seen better days. But this calendula is happy. The nice thing about our area is calendula seems to do better in this kind of weather than in our really dry, hot summers. So, so much is dead in this bed. This is also my leek bed. I will probably plant a lot of that lettuce that's inside in here. More chives. We have a lot of chives. We have so much to rip out here. And oh, we've got some tomatillos that I think they're actually okay if I harvested them but the plants look pretty much done for. We made a lot of green salsa. A lot of green salsa this year, and I'm glad because last year our tomatillos did terrible, and I think we grew them one other year, which also was bad. So this is my first like decent tomatillo year. Oh my. I'm just like looking around thinking, what can I salvage as food and what is just done? And look, there's quite a few of them like this. 
that we could still eat from and maybe make one more small batch of salsa and maybe use some of the green tomatoes with it. We did that once and it was pretty good. So you'll see here, there are leeks that are trying to grow up. And that's another good reason for me to clean up this bed like of all the tomatillo plants, just to give more room to my leeks to do their thing and to have their time to shine. And we get a lot of leeks here. This bed is a perennial leek bed. That means they self-sow. They come back over and over again. It's like almost like garlic cloves that come on the side of the leeks that are ready. They kind of drop off into the soil, whether I mean to or not, when I harvest them, and then they come back up. So we're continually getting food from this bed, even if we don't plant more, which is kind of nice. I didn't know it'd be that way, but I am thankful that we get leeks all the time. My Jamaican Rosella biscus is done. That's okay, we got a lot of harvest off that one this year. Over here you can tell a lot of this stuff. You can tell what is frost hardy and not. That chard looks awesome. This calendula looks awesome. There are even some onions from last year in this bed. They're great, they're happy. However, the peppers, they are done. They look like they melted. You know, that melted look of frost kissing a plant. They look done for, oh weird. Guys, look, this, I think it's a Serrano. It is fine. This one's fine. Right next to it, the cayenne or not. So that's very weird. It's very weird in the same garden to have little microclimates of something being protected and something not protected. Oh, those cabbage, they're so bug ridden, but they came back from last year. I don't even know why. Maybe I cut it at the base and they just volunteered, but that was kind of a surprise to see except the aphids, they found it first. Big, beautiful chart over there, and yet all the beans are done for. So I've got so much cleanup to do. This trellis had a lot of lemon cucumber at one point on it. Now we've cleaned most of that up. Over here, I planted shallots. You'll see some shallots I missed from last year, but then I planted more over here in this spot. So we should get a good harvest of shallots in the summer. My different plants in here are sad and dead and we're just gonna have to do a big cleanup of that whole area. On this side, we planted teeny tiny lettuce. I've gotta show you how teeny and tiny they are. See that? And that, they're tiny little lettuce that I started inside right there. We put this tool fabric from Joann's and they have been fine the birds haven't got them, which shows me it was birds and it was not slugs or roly polies. I had such a disappointment. I planted broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, some lettuce, beets. So much of it was lost and I thought maybe it was slugs and roly polies. Apparently it was birds because I put beer traps out. It caught nothing. I put tulle on the stuff that I just recently planted and that stuff's all safe. So. I need to make a note, like a garden note in a journal or somewhere to remember that it's actually the birds that are getting my fall starts if I don't cover them, not the slugs and roly polies that seem to get my spring starts for summer when I plant those out. It's just every season kind of has their own pest and their own issue. And there are some things alive in this bed. Let me show you. These are snapdragons that are coming back in the midst of all the dead. We have a bunch of kale that we planted out. This is a cyber frill kale. And then I have dino kale as well. And I had this all covered, but even the ones that are a little bit uncovered, I think because of the rain, they were okay. We have chard in this bed that's going to live. And yeah, that's mostly what's gonna stay around in here. I do need to, Clean out. Maybe I could plant a little bit more kale because I've got more kale. I just had way too much kale this year. Okay, over here, some of these tomato plants are alive underneath and the tops are dead, which also shows interesting microclimate kind of thing that the different beds were completely dead and these are only partially dead. These Chinese cabbage that I planted got nibbled on so bad, but they actually are bouncing back, which makes me happy because my kids love, love, love Chinese cabbage. It's like their favorite of the cabbages. All the cabbages, but their favorite is this one. 
and under here I planted, oh my gosh, other cabbage. This is Red Acre. It is coming back a little bit. It was so nibbled on. That's encouraging that I might get a little bit from it, even though there was some over here that's like just vanished. It's just literally gone from birds. They ate all of it. Over here, this used to be my potato patch. You will see a little bit of potato plants. They're volunteers and a gopher trap. We bought this expensive gopher trap and have not caught any, but we know there's gophers. They stole things out of this bed. So we've got calendula, some volunteer potatoes. I do need to clean that up and make it nice and neat now that there won't be as much to take care of. Oh, my sweet potatoes. They were kissed by frost. So that is my clue, my indication. I need to harvest those because that's what I wait for with sweet potatoes. I can't wait to see what we got there. Got a lot of cleanup, some more volunteer potatoes. Need to cut out that sunflower plant that's definitely seen better days. Over here, I do have some living zinnia and some not. Now I planted under here, oh, what did I plant? I think I planted broccoli. And I put this kind of like a bird netting over it after it was nibbled on to see if it would come back. And I think some of it will. It's really hard to show you because of the mess around it, but I do think, oh, let me show you here. Okay, so this one is alive. That's a broccoli, that's a broccoli. This one was one that was eaten, but it looks like it might come back. I think there's a broccoli rob on this area. I also had one other kind of broccoli, but I don't know if those made it. <sighs> Such a mess. Oh, I really want to get out here and rip it out, but I'm just going to show you and then I will do work later. I have cauliflower over here. You can see literally I need to cover it with something I have some tool I need to throw a tool on it and see if that bounces back I don't think that one will um yeah it's a little depressing but maybe something can bounce back if I put something over it that is asparagus that is changing colors I will cut those back pretty soon this volunteer tomato that I put in here didn't produce one tomato for me and I think that's weird I have no idea why it would get that big and not producing tomatoes, but whatever, whatever. I'm going to show you this bed too. Oh, there's a tomato I missed. I wonder if I, is it good enough to bring in? Oh, it still looks that dull color. These I don't think ripen on the counter, only the ones that are a little bit shiny. We actually have more celery underneath this mess of tomatoes. So if I pull this mess out, I will actually let this celery see light. Oh, look, there's some more little tomatoes right there that we missed. So, but they don't look the right coloring, the glossiness to ripen. So this is a lot of work for me to do over here. Oh, over here, weird. It looks like some of my t potatoes were frost damaged and I've never had potatoes frost damaged. They usually are fine. So as I said, everything's different, everything's different, but we probably could harvest some potatoes from in here. That one looks all weird and slimy like frost. I apologize for the mess of weeds in the path. I will hopefully get this better. That one right next to it is 100% fine and I will never quite understand how that works. These zinnia are done. They are done. They are done. I had a lot of peppers and zinnia and stuff in here. I had Let's see, it was pumpkin and some squashes over this trellis. We mostly cleaned this one up, but this one over here that was loofah, we did not clean that one up. I think that one's loofah and spaghetti squash. And it needs to be cleaned again. Some tomatoes I missed, but they are the dull finish. And so I don't think they'll ripen inside at all. Oh, a couple pepper plants in here are fine. Like that right there is fine. A lot of the ones in this bed are not too bad. So I'll kind of leave them alone. You never know if we're gonna have warmer temps or cooler temps. So this might be like one of the last beds that I clean up and we'll see if I get anything else from it. And I've actually had some peppers overwinter before. It's very unusual. Like I've actually tried to overwinter them and failed, but then I've not tried and succeeded. Not all my peppers ever. Like usually like one or two will make it. And some of these, like some of this bean is fine. So we maybe will get a bean or two more. I don't know. I might just rip it out and just say, done with that. We'll see. Okay, I want to show you a couple more things. I want to show you the citrus in front of my house. 
I want to show you my little herb garden area. So we're gonna say goodbye to the vegetable garden for now. And I will take you, sorry, very loud truck behind me. I will take you over there to show you that area of stuff we grow. I know I'm probably gonna forget something, but I'm trying to like hit all the bases of things that I've showed you before that I'd like to show you again. Oh, over here. This is our one living apricot tree. We had others, two others die of disease. I'm hoping to be able to prune this one and have it bear fruit this year. That is the goal. I grew up with an apricot tree when I was a kid. I love them. I really hope this one hangs with us. We also have this persimmon tree that we harvested a bunch of persimmons off of and the cool thing is we wrapped it with that tool fabric so that deer and ground squirrels couldn't steal them we got a good harvest we've only had this one in the ground i think maybe a year and a half we did a terrible job terrible job it was too heavy so maybe with some pruning it can kind of get a more upright upright shape over here this is my herb garden and you can see some thyme buried, some sweet William and calendula. This is my coral bark, Japanese maple. I have my one and only Dahlia. And I think there's some lemon balm hiding underneath it. We have a Shasta daisy, a little queen lime red zinnia. You'll see over here how, how cute, teeny tiny dill coming up tiny dill and my ginger which haven't had the best year because chickens have been scratching at them so i should just harvest them at some point but they are so alive so maybe they'll grow i don't know we have i think that is actually bergamot back there that's so tiny because of the chickens again and then this was a alyssum that apparently died oh well i also have a potted sweet potato plant and this one did not get kissed as frost as bad, probably because it's on this little back patio. We have some different fun little plants that my son put in pots just around here on the back patio. This is the area that I usually harden off all of my starts. Here's a hibiscus. This is not the one I make teas and drinks from, just the fun flower one. Some more fun plants over here and then my <laughs> Wow, it is blooming beautiful, but it needs to be cut back so bad. I really should harvest some of this and dry it for teas, but my bees love it. But maybe if I harvest it, I will be motivated to give it a harsh cutting back because it is really, really out of control. I don't know, I might even need to start over. It's out of control. This is my first Meyer lemon tree that we planted here. I'm sorry, it's so yellow, I apologize. I did just feed it, but the water probably didn't help has a couple lemons and I'll show you my healthier one in my pot in a second. We keep these on here. I'll link to the video about the things I do to prepare for the cold. We did feed it, but as I said, it started in clay soil that doesn't drain well. It's probably yellow because of all the moisture we have in here, a chocolate mint, which is the type of mint I love for tea. And it will take over if you don't have it in a pot. So I keep it in a pot because I don't want it to take over everything. All right, I gotta go back up front because now I get to show you my potted citrus and my pomegranates that didn't produce anything this year. But I think they might next year. I also have teeny tiny fig trees. I have weeping plum trees also did not produce, but it's what it happens when you have a newer place and it just takes time. You have to be patient for the fruit. Here's one of my pomegranate trees. And then I have another one over here on the other side of those really pretty snapdragons that I showed you earlier. We really need to mow and stuff, so forgive the mess. But those are here. They will be so pretty when they get big and when they flower and when they have the red bulbed pomegranates. Oh, I can't wait for that look. We have up here, oh my goodness, I have so much work to do. It almost is embarrassing to show you because it reminds me like, this needs to be cleaned up, that needs to be cleaned up. But it's also motivating. It's also like, 
I need to go do this. Okay, right here. Let me show you this. This is one of our Santa Rosa weeping plum trees. Yeah, the deer ate all the leaves off the weeping part, but that's kind of living out in the country. I really need to thin my irises, but these are gorgeous purple bearded irises that were amazing this year. The best year I ever had. I should find a picture and put it up on here for you. It was ridiculously beautiful, but I need to thin them so that they flower like that again. And then right here is our other weeping Santa Rosa plum tree. What I'm gonna do with those irises, I'm gonna extend the ones down this fence line. I already started with some. They need to be weeded badly, maybe barked too, so the weeds don't grow up so much. You see where we started to extend, and then we'll probably go all the way down the rest of the fence line. And then way over here, we have the tiniest little fig tree. Oh, I forgot to show you the fig tree by the chicken coop. That'll be another video, another day. But this fig tree, yeah, it needs to be weeded because the grasses, <laughs> are growing up as much as the tree. It's like a tiny short bush, but hopefully it will keep growing and someday produce fruit for us. I am showing you our imperfect because I'm vulnerable because I want you to know you can grow food even when things aren't picture perfect. They're not Pinterest. They're not like magazine cover. If you put in the hard work, and it doesn't even take tons of time. It can be windows of time. I have a whole video about how you can grow food in 10 minutes a day. I will link it below. You don't have to have endless time. If you just consistently do something, you will grow food. Okay, best part for last, gonna show you these potted citrus. Oh, and I can't forget, I have some little baby fig trees here too. Look at this teeniest tiny one that, and Japanese maple that I will plant out at some point and some other, <laughs> fun different stuff that I have. I just like, I've got herbs and oregano covered with leaves and thyme and a flooded lettuce. All that fun stuff here. Okay, that's last. This is my lime tree. We used all the limes. We used so many limes. We have an orange tree right here. This is actually a tangelo, not technically an orange, but a tangerine. We have, what was this? I think this is one of Valencia. This is one of the only ones that didn't have fruit this year. We have right here, there's another Valencia. And you'll hear the drums of my neighbor. Lots of lemons on my lemon tree. Oh my gosh, it's like happiness in a pot. This one is so much healthier and darker green than the one in the ground because it doesn't play soil. Okay, this is more mandarins, clementine. Sorry for how loud it is. And what is this? This is a tanjo. We're starting to turn colors and grapefruit. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. I'm so happy about it. So happy. Sorry for the drums. Hopefully you can hear my voice over that at the end of the video, but thank you for joining me. Look at the beautiful fall colors. I'm gonna go in and work on some of my homestead preserving stuff right now, but the sun and the blue sky is leaving. It looks like it might have rain. I got out here just in time to share it with you. And I will try to clean up my garden and get back out here and show you my clean version of the fall winter garden because we're not always this messy. Not always. Yeah, thank you guys. And I hope that you are enjoying the beautiful colors of this season. Mm -hmm.